It's 4 o'clock in Char uh, Charleston, West Virginia. It's 2 p.m. in Boise, Idaho. You know, it's always a good idea to go with what works. Get rid of what doesn't work. In short, be smart. The opposite of being smart is being stupid, right? Americans must stop embracing, tolerating, and supporting stupid. Without fear or favor, the Chris Salcedo Show starts right now. Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Friday. Welcome to the Chris Alcedo Show on Newsmax. You've all heard the expression, work smarter, not harder. There's a lesser-known corollary to that axiom that states, stupid makes life harder, and it does. It's time that America rejects stupid. That's our observation in today's preamble. I'm going to go through a series of things that typify stupid. I'm going to recommend that you, your family, our country, reject each and every one of them. Science denial is stupid. Our friends at Libs of TikTok have highlighted a self-identified trans person who says she trained her family like one would train a dog to be science deniers. Watch. So first of all, a lot of people are asking what treat I was using. Um, if you don't know, for circus dogs, when they do something that we like, we click that behavior and then we give them a treat. Um, I did not use it as a positive marker like that for uh, my family because I'm not going to treat them for basic human decency. I instead used it as a negative marker. So every time they said she, I would click so that they would start to associate the click with a she in their head and would start to automatically self-correct. Oh, wow. She trained her family like dogs, to be science deniers. You know, China must be laughing hysterically as they watch all of this data being gathered by their little spy app, the very spy app that your Congress continues to allow to endanger our country. While the people of China struggle to breathe free right now, this woman uses her limited intellect to push deviancy and science denialism. What's sad is that her family didn't tell her to go jump in a lake. I did explain to them what this was for and why I was doing it, and then I carabinered it to my hip at all times. And I definitely had several occasions where a family member would start to say something, look at it, pause, and then purposefully gender me correctly. And that happened at least three or four times. Oh, this silly woman's delusions were fed and nurtured by her, yes, her family. Does it get any more stupid than that? Apparently it does. In places like the People's Republic of California and a place called Antioch, robber fatally shot a Chevron gas station clerk, the killer will not be charged with murder. You see, in Wackadoodle, California, the laws are written to advantage the criminals there. 20-year-old Ronald Jackson Jr. robbed a Chevron store. The clerk, 36-year-old James Williams, gave chase and opened fire, hitting Jackson in the leg. And that's when the robber, Jackson, returned fire and then killed the clerk. California prosecutors say that the thug was firing in self-defense. Thus, he will not be charged with murdering the store clerk that he was robbing. That's not justice. That's stupid. And that leads us to communist China and Apple. The CEO of Apple, Tim Cook, doubled down on stupid recently. Mr. Cook's first act of stupidity was allowing the future of his business to hinge on the whims of a racist, genocidal, and inhuman communist regime in China. Mr. Cook's second act of stupidity was aiding the human rights abuses of America's enemy, China, by limiting the ability of iPhone users in China to pass files from device to device, thus allowing freedom seekers there to bypass the CCP's censorship and surveillance state. Mr. Cook was cornered by a reporter yesterday who asked him questions, several questions. He was asked if he supports the Chinese people's right to protest. He was asked if he had a reaction to the CCP beating up factory workers who object to the China virus lockdowns. He was asked if he regretted helping China quell the fledgling rebellion brewing in that country. He was asked if it's problematic doing business with the biggest butchers on the planet. He refused to answer. Stone cold silence. Now, I would have thrown in, this is why I'm not a reporter, I would have thrown in another question. I would have said, hey, Mr. Cook, do you still consider yourself to be an American? 
hitching your company's future to the most bloodthirsty regime in human history. Stupid as stupid gets. But nobody can hold a candle to the level of stupidity that flows daily from Joe Biden's pro-China White House. Spokesmouth John Kirby was asked why the left-wing Biden regime is silent on Apple, helping the inhuman Chinese regime slaughter their dissenters. But in the face of Elon Musk attempting to return American free speech to Twitter, the White House said they're watching Twitter. Kirby said, quote, we're talking about potential foreign investment issues, and I have nothing to report in terms of any investigations in that regard, end quote. But did the White House make their statement about watching Twitter based on baseless accusations of illegal foreign investments? Roll the tape. This is a critical moment, really, in terms of um, ensuring that Twitter does not become a vector for misinformation. I mean, are you concerned about the, you know, Elon Musk says there's more and more uh, subscribers coming online. Are you concerned about that? And what tools do you have? Who is it at the White House that is really keeping track of this? So, look, this is something that we're certainly uh, keeping an eye on. Hmm. So, as you can clearly see, the White House was responding to a clearly mentally deranged member of the press who was not concerned about Twitter's alleged foreign investors, but rather she was concerned about once censored Americans returning to Twitter and pushing back on left-wing narratives that have no semblance in fact. Narratives like men can have babies, teaching folks to hate whites is it racism, or that the Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation. No mention in that question of foreign investments. Trusting anything that comes out of the Biden White House is the definition of stupid. Stupid is as stupid does. The wisdom of Forrest Gump's mom is common sense. Sadly, it's not so common among left-wing crazy people all around the world, including here in the United States. Our culture never used to tolerate stupid. We used to shun stupid. We discouraged stupid, and we were repulsed by it. Now, whether we're talking about delusional science deniers on libs of TikTok, pro-criminal Democrat policies, so-called American companies that bet their existence on the whims of an evil empire, or the lame excuses given by a White House that seeks only to deny their political opposition a voice. America needs to reevaluate their standards and start rejecting stupid again.